In this short video, we're going to learn a little bit of the basics about how to write math in LaTeX. And normally, you can use a program such as TechShop if you're on a Mac, or WinTech if you're on a Windows machine. Uh, and in our case, I'm going to be writing the code directly in the terminal. Uh, and I'm using a Mac, so uh, you can use another program to write this. This tutorial is more about how to actually write the math. So that's what we'll focus on. And I'll also be using Vim as the tech editor. So uh, first, I want to create the file. So what we're going to do is um, place the file wherever we want it. So I'm going to make sure I know uh, where I'm putting this. So we're going to, I'm going to put the file on my Dropbox. And um, that's what we're going to do. So I have to keep reminding myself of where everything is. So I'm going to put it in my teaching folder. So in order to make the file, all I do is I call up the program Vim. So I'll type Vim, and then I will choose the name of a file I would like. And I'm going to call it test1. Now, I've already created this file, so test1.tech. I've already created this file, so when I press Enter, um, it's just going to open that file. So let's do that. But otherwise, it would create the file for you. So if I do that, so I've already begun editing this file. And you can see how I started the, um, the text. The first thing I write is document class. This is what's going to tell me what kind of a document I'm writing. Am I writing an article, a book, you know, anything like that. So uh, you always have to declare that immediately at the beginning of any LaTeX file. And LaTeX is going to use a lot of packages. It's going to bring in tools from outside, and we're going to be able to do certain tasks depending on what, what packages we use. And I just want the most basic of packages. You can ignore the packages that say X color and page color and just color. That's just going to be so that we can actually see what we're writing on the screen so that I don't have it white. But what you're going to need is, at least for the very basics, you're going to want to use the package. Um, uh, you're going to want to use the package um, AMS math. So that's the first one that I have here. And you're also going to want to use AMS symbols so that you can use a lot of the mathematical symbols uh, that you could potentially want. When, after you start with all the packages that you have already, uh, that you know that you're going to need, you're going to want to begin the document. And that's going to tell me, after this point, everything that I write is going to be what I see in the document. Everything before that is called the preamble, and that's where you set all of your commands and things like that. So when you write begin document, um, you always have to end. The very last line should be end document. And here I've just written testing one. So I'm going to save this file. And I'm just going to see what happens when I run it. If I want to run it, I go to the directory that I'm in, where the file is. So I've already done that preemptively. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll type PDF LaTeX. And then space, and I'll put the name of the file that I have. So I believe that the file is called test1.tech. And if it is, then this will run. And what happens is, is that this creates the PDF file. So let's check to make sure. And I've put the PDF file on another screen. And so here it was just created. And it says testing1. So let's go back. And let's try to actually put some math into this. So let's go back to our, let's delete this testing1. So, and let's start to put in something potentially useful. So, let's try to use some math. And imagine you don't want to label, let's write an equation, and you don't want to label the equation. So, we're going to do slash and square brackets. That's going to begin and end an equation, and it's going to have its own line. So, let's just write something like the limit as n goes to infinity. And then we'll put something random, such as uh, a given sequence let's say n over n plus 1. And let's say that equals, we should all know what that equals, that equals 1. And now let's save this. And let's just check to make sure that everything is OK. We're going to run the PDF. We're going to output the PDF after we save it. And let's check to see what we see. And there it is. The limit is n goes to infinity, n over n plus 1. So now let's go back and start doing a little bit more fancy things. 
So if you want to write a um, sentence and you want to put math in that sentence, so let's say I have, um, um, let's define the function f from u to r to the nth power. So here I'm specifying that I begin math with a dollar sign symbol, and I always end math with a single dollar sign symbol as well. So let's just see what happens. We will save this, and then we will run the PDF. Every time you make an edit and a change, you have to run the PDF so that you get a new output. So here it pops up. Let's define the function f from u to r n. And if you notice, I used a very special notation for r so that it has that blackboard symbol, and I use its backslash math bb, b for blackboard. So now let's maybe continue. There's another way to write the limit um, as n goes to infinity. Instead of using the square brackets, we can use the double dollar sign, and we'll get the same effect. But just to illustrate, I'll maybe put some different kind of math. Maybe we'll write an integral, the integral from a to b of, let's say, the exponential function e to the minus x squared dx. I don't really know what that equals. Um, it's actually not easy to calculate this if a and b are not plus and minus infinity. But um, so let's see. Let's just make sure that this works. Let's run the PDF. And if there's ever an error, it'll tell us immediately when it tries to run the PDF. So there it is, the integral from a to b of e to the minus x squared. So let's do a little bit more. Um, now let's talk a little bit about, besides just writing mathematical symbols, what else can we do? So maybe we want to, um, let's say, write a list of entries. Uh, if you want to write a list, and let's say you don't want to number them, then you can begin and use the curly brackets, and it's called enumerate. And end, enumerate. Always begin and end um, right away so that you don't have to worry about ever closing a statement. So, and if we want to write in, so actually enumerate is if I want numbers. So, yeah, let me, okay. I've already done this. So let's, it's not a list, but it's a, um, an ordered list, uh, a numbered list, let's say, a numbered list of entries. So we first begin the item. So this is the first item. And then we want another item, backslash item, the second item. And then, right, I've already ended it, so that's OK. So this is going to give us two items. Let's check to make sure. Save. Let's see what happens. OK, runs. And we get a numbered list of entries. What if you don't necessarily want the list of entries to be numbered exactly 1 and 2? What if you want A and B, I, Roman numerals, or whatever? In that case, you go up to where the begin enumerate begins, and you use square brackets to add options. So let's, let's say we want to start with parentheses A, enclosed. And this is how we would do it. Let's save, and then let's run. There's an error. What's the problem? So it turns out that if you want to actually do something like this, you need to load another package. So the package we need to load, in this case, I've looked this up in advance, um, is use package enumerate. And that's the package we're going to need to run. And the reason that we don't, you know, the reason that LaTeX doesn't include all of the packages right away is because that would just take up way too much memory. And you want to be a little bit more efficient about which packages you need in your current document. And it's sort of a waste of memory to include every single package if you're not going to use it. So it looks like I've already written this. So let's run the, let's abort. OK, let's do it again. Now it went through, hopefully, without any error. Let's check. Good. It shows. So that's what's going to happen. All right, let's do a little bit more. Um, so now we needed that for enumerate. Now let's do a little bit. Oh, or I can do itemize. So another way to do this, um, to not number the list, we can do begin itemize. And then it's the same idea. First item, second, and itemize. And that'll produce for us a another list. But this time, the list is not numbered. It's bulleted. 
as you can see here. So let's go back and do a little bit something else. Um, one very useful thing that we can do is we can draw graphs, we can draw diagrams. So I think it's uh, important to talk a little bit about those. So let's say I wanted to do a diagram. Um, let's draw the diagram for a product and its universal property. So for that, we're going to first we're going to open um, brackets so that we know that we're doing some math. And it's going to be, we're going to use the package xy. So actually, I have to load the package in a moment. Um, so the xy is used by, um, you begin xy. To be quite honest with you, I'm not sure what all of these symbols mean. But um, I hopefully did it correctly so that this will work. So we're going to draw uh, one of our diagrams. And we want to place the diagrams in a particular Order. I've already done this in advance, so I know what these diagrams will look like. So first you specify the position where you want to place the diagram. And then you want to say what you're actually putting in that position. And the plus symbol just gives you a little bit of space so that if you draw arrows between sets, for instance, if you or whatever you put in these um, parentheses, uh, then you're going to have a little bit of space between them. But the star is always necessary. The asterisk is always necessary. So we're going to put V here, and we want to label this. And label with an equal sign and double quotation marks. And then you always end the line with a semicolon. And we're going to put a U here as well. If you recall the definition of a product. And we're going to put our two sets. So I'm, I've positioned them in, in such a way so that the diagram will be a little bit easier to read. And we have to label everything because when we label things, these are going to be our nodes. And we'll be able to draw arrows between our nodes uh, once we've labeled them so that the arrows actually go where we want them to. We can also manually place the arrows, but that gets a little bit annoying if you suddenly change the position of a node. So this sets up all the objects in our diagram. So if we want to actually now draw arrows between them, we would do open parentheses, uh, curly brackets, arrow. And we want to specify a couple of arrows. So let's first draw the arrows from the product, u, to the first component, x. And uh, we can either put a symbol above, below, or in the middle. If we want to put the symbol below, then we'll use an underbrace, an, an underline. And then we'll put our first map, pi x. So let's just make sure that this is going to work before I continue on. So I've written this, and what we should eventually see is, hopefully this goes well. I made a mistake. So let me make sure that I have this correct. I always mess this up at the beginning. Oh, of course. I didn't load the package. That's the problem. So let's load the package. And the package that we need is called xy. And I want to use all of its features. So I will put as an option all xy. And this will actually load the package. And now let's try it. So let's abort again. Run it. Hopefully it works. And there it is. So that's part of the diagram. So it's starting to look out pretty nicely. So let's now add in the um, other arrows. There, there are much faster ways to do everything that I'm doing, but um, once you get used to this, you'll also get a little bit faster with shortcuts. So here's the second arrow. And now I want to draw the little curly, the, the smooth arrows that I've drawn before in the talk on products. So we're going to draw an arrow from v to x as well. And let's label it, um, let's call it, just to be consistent with what we had, pi prime x. Now I want it to curve a little bit. And to do that, after the arrow, I'm going to put an at symbol. And I will 
curve it a little bit, let's say down, because I think that's what I'm going to need. So I'm going to curve it down by, let's say, 1.0. Um, let's see what happens. So this is how much it's going to curve by. Let's save and see what output we get. So as you can see here, that gives me a curved arrow like that. And I can continue on in this fashion. And I guess um, the only other thing is uh, maybe we can also just draw the universal arrow, the unique arrow that comes from V to U in the definition of a product. So for that, I would also begin with at, and I would use a double dash. That's going to indicate that I want a dashed arrow. I specify the source. I specify the target. And if I want to, I can also put a little symbol above it. So let's call that H. If I wanted to put it above, I would put um, a caret H. So let's see. Let's run this. And then we get something like that. So we can proceed in this fashion and finish the diagram up. Instead of finishing the diagram, let's actually move on to drawing plots of functions in, let's say, more than just one dimension. But for now, we'll stick with a two-dimensional plot. So for this, we're going to use the ticks package. We're going to draw in plots and ticks. And as a result, we'll have to load the package before we run the code. So I always like centering my images. So we will begin center and end center. And in here, we're going to actually add the tick file, um, create the tick file. So we're going to begin ticks picture and ticks picture. And we want to plot something. And whenever we want to plot something, there's a convenient uh, way to do that using what's called PGF plots, which is another package that we'll also have to load. And the way we do that is we begin, we set an axis. And the axis is going to tell us you know, what, what kind of axis we need for our function. And here I have a function already uh, written out, planned for this. And all oh, right, and we also should specify you know, our domain and our codomain for the axis. So let's, let's do that. Um, we also want to make sure that our function is going to be smooth. So we specify that. A lot of this is, you know, you can look these things up and begin somewhere and uh, just go off from it. So we're going to set our minimum value of x as negative 0.5, our maximum value of x is 0.5, and we also want to specify our codomain. So let's specify that as negative 1.15. I'm doing this for a very specific reason because I have a specific function in mind that I'd like to show you. And actually, uh, I'm not sure what color is going to come out when I do this. So just to be safe, uh, I'm going to specify the color as, let's say, green um, so that I don't have to worry about uh, the graph coming out black on a black background. Um, so let's begin by, so this sets the axis. Now what we want to do is we want to put a plot on the axis. So we're going to add plot. And when we add plot, we want to specify a bunch of things. First, as, a, as this is a computer, everything is going to be discrete. And it's going to plot a discrete set of points, and it's going to connect them in some fashion, maybe by straight lines in this case. Um, you can also make it a little... You know, there are various ways to do this as well. So I need, to, I need to specify a number of samples that we're going to take. So let's just choose 100. I would not recommend choosing significantly more than this. Uh, uh, you know, 10,000 would probably take forever to load if it's a complicated function. So um, actually, yeah, that's fine. And we also want to specify the plot of our function is going to be green. And we also want to specify the domain of our function. So for that, we're going to write domain and specify it as negative, let's say, 0 0.5. And I'm going to plot a function that has a singularity. Not exactly a singularity, but it's not quite well defined at the origin. So we're going to go very close to the origin, but not quite there. So we're going to go to negative 0 0.05. Um, I'd also like to make sure that we all um, See this function, so I'll specify that the curve is drawn thick. And now that closes the options. Now I'm going to open a curly brackets, and here's where I specify the actual function. So I'm going to plot the topologist sine curve. So that's sine of something. 
and you have to specify that um, uh, we want to use, uh, we're specifying the degrees of the function, and we use the original variable as x. So that's sine degree, oh, we want 1 over x. And so I think um, now we want to save this. And is this going to work? Well, let's find out. Right, I forgot I had to load the package. <laughs> As usual. So um, let's go to the top and let's load the package that we need. We're going to need two packages for this. First, we need the package ticks picture. Not sorry, ticks, just ticks. And we need plots. So that's called PGF plots. And that'll be that. And hopefully now this will run well. So apparently I have an error. Well, what is it? Oh, I didn't specify exactly the domain. Um, what I should have done was. What's the problem? Oh, this has to be replaced with a semicolon, I believe. Sorry, a uh, colon. Now let's try. So the PDF was written. Now let's check it out. And there's our plot. So that plots sine 1 over x between negative 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.05. So I think a lot of these are the basics that you'll probably need when writing uh, LaTeX. So I hope this is somewhat helpful.